In this video, I will provide you with a reason why you might choose to put a step in the landing, along with detailed construction about how you can build a stairway like this in the second part of the video. So let's go ahead and get started with a method you can use to lower the height of your riser when dealing with a stairway with a flat landing and keeping the same depth for each one of the steps. Now this will require you to rebuild the stairway. However, it will also allow you to work within the same space of the existing stairway. And feel free to check out the measurements. The measurements for both stairs will be exactly the same. And I went ahead and made the measurements about what they would be in some of the older homes that you might be dealing with, where you might have a riser height about eight inches and a tread depth of about nine inches. This seems to be a pretty common measurement for older stairs in tight spaces. And these will usually be stairways in smaller homes. So to fix this problem, you will be removing and replacing the stairway. And this is usually a difficult problem to solve without replacing the stairway. So let's go ahead and lower our riser height by simply adding a riser at the landing. And by doing this, you will not need to go any further into the existing building which means you won't have to modify the floor framing or the wall framing, and in some cases, your basement or your roof framing. And for those of you wondering, why would you be modifying the roof framing? That might be to allow for more headroom for the stairway. Yes, this is not an easy problem to fix once you get outside of the original measurements for the stairwell. And let's go ahead and wrap this video up with something that the stairway might look like in your house after you're done. I know it gets a little confusing when I have a box here sitting on top of another box connecting to the stairs and you can't see the wood framing on it. Now this was not meant to provide you with framing details, just simply design suggestions. I do have a book at our website on how to build stairs with landings that should provide you with all the information you need to rebuild your stairway to lower the riser height if that's going to allow you to create a safer stairway to use. And next up in the video, let's go ahead and take a look at how you can build a stairway with a split landing. And this is actually part of one of my home building projects on one of my other construction channels. And I will put a link to that playlist in the video description area. And the first thing I want to point out is that we do not have a riser at the top that is three quarters of an inch thick like we do here. And I did that to move the stairway over another three quarters of an inch to provide me with a little more width at the landing. Another trick for the trade there. And since we have a step up in the landing, our fire blocks will also need to be raised a little higher. And if you notice over here, I have the treads and risers extending about a half inch past the outside of the stringer. And this is something you don't need to do all the time, but I like to do it to protect the drywall. And for those of you who've done enough building, you know that the drywall gets damaged around the perimeter of the stairs quite often. Let's go ahead and zoom out here, take a look at the landing and of course a block that I put in here so that we could attach the drywall to this section of the building. Next up, let's take a look at the blocking around the perimeter of the landing. Again, fire blocking. And for those of you wondering why these blocks aren't lower, it's because they also provide nailing for the floor trim and the drywall. And this set of stairs has a closet underneath it with a regular door there. And again, our fire blocks and a three quarter inch spacer. You can also change the width of the spacer to make it wider or shorter, depending upon whether you have half inch drywall or 5 eighths drywall or even multiple layers of drywall, along with skirt boards. And this is something that's going to make your drywaller happy because they will be able to slide the drywall behind the stringers instead of having to notch around the stringer. And again, our fire blocks along with some support studs for our landing joist. 
Next up, let's go ahead and remove the wall framing so that we can get a better view of just the stairway. And then we can go around the stairway to provide you with another shot of the support studs on the other side. Then we can go over to the other side here. Take a look at our spacer board, stringers, ledger, and of course our riser here. For those of you who didn't understand what I was talking about, we have a riser on the face of each one of the stringers, working our way all the way up to the landing. However, this won't be the case at the very top of the stairway here, where we are not going to have this riser, and instead we're going to deduct the width of the riser from this side of the stringer, and then we can move the entire stairway over three quarters of an inch. And this is going to give me three quarters of an inch more width in the landing here. And hopefully that makes sense. Go ahead and take a look at the stairway without the treads, risers, and landing sheathing. And of course our landing joist will be spaced 16 inches on center. And you can always make it a little shorter if you want to. I've done that for years while building stairs. I mean, there's no reason to go 16 inches on center and have a 3 or a 4 inch bay here. When you can split the difference and change the on-center spacing, that will also increase the strength of the landing floor. Take a look at another view here, where the stringers will be sitting on top of the landing sheathing. And of course, this is an excellent way to create a stronger connection for the lower stringers and provide them with a solid surface to sit on. Now another thing I want to point out is that the stringers are positioned to where there will be a straight line from the face of the lower riser to the face of the upper riser. And that will make a little more sense when we take a look at it from the side here. And I went ahead and drew a straight line here or a plumb line. And this is usually how the architect has it drawn on the plans. And the last thing we need to do will be to install the treads. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or letting us know in the comment area.